Welcome to Make the Game. My name is Matt Hackett. You might know me from Twitter as Rictor via the Game Dev Difficulty tiers or perhaps the Steam Dev Cheat Sheet. Or maybe my book, How to Make a Video Game All by Yourself. In this video, we're talking about GDC, or Game Developers Conference, which takes place in San Francisco every year at the Moscone Center. We're gonna discuss preparing for GDC, getting a badge or not, lodging around GDC, a tour of the Moscone Center, navigating GDC parties, and general tips and advice I've picked up after going to GDC over the last decade. Let's get started. You're listening to Make the Game with Matt Hackett. When preparing for GDC, the first thing I recommend doing is putting your game or other thing that you're trying to push on your phone. I did this with my game Pixel Washer. I made a video in portrait mode. I sped up the video about five to 10 speed to get through it quickly. I showed off lots of different levels in the game. And maybe most importantly, I downloaded it to my phone so I wouldn't have to worry about a lost Wi-Fi connection. This makes showing off your game or other project really easy in person. And I highly recommend doing it. Next, I think it's worth printing business cards. It's kind of fun to do, it's super cheap. I know not everybody likes dragging around these pieces of paper, but if you're at GDC all week networking, inevitably someone's gonna ask for a business card, or you're gonna find a situation where you wish you had them. I can't tell you how many I exchanged with people over the last week. You can make really simple ones or you can design your own. Here's what the cards looked like that we used back in my Lost Decade Games days. And then here's my most recent business cards I used for Valadria. And of course, I've got my book on the back. When preparing for GDC, I also think it's a good idea to make a custom list in Google Maps. I labeled mine GDC 2024, and then I added to that list a bunch of stuff I thought would be useful. The Moscone Center, the hotel you're staying at, a bunch of restaurants that are nearby that you wanna try, the BART station, maybe where your friends are staying at, the locations of parties you wanna to go to. Having all that available in a list on Google Maps is super helpful. Lastly, you wanna dress in layers when going to GDC. During the day, it's really sunny and you'll be walking a lot, so you're likely to get sweaty and wanna peel off your layers. But then at night, it gets really cold and windy in San Francisco, so you're gonna to wanna to put those layers back on. I've got a nice puffy coat I wear, and then I even bring a little scarf I can wrap around my neck to keep me nice and cozy. Even with all that, I was too cold sometimes, and too hot during the days, so the key is layers. Next, let's talk about getting a badge or not. If you buy one of these out of pocket and you get all access, I think it's like 1500 bucks or two grand. They're really quite expensive. They do get you into a lot of stuff, all the talks, you can be there all week, but it's pretty pricey and you might not need all that. So do the research to see what kind of badge you want. If you can get your company to pay for it, I highly recommend doing that. Maybe you can be an exhibitor or you can get that week off. You can go learn stuff at GDC and bring it back to your company. If they're willing to pay for the trip, it's well worth doing. You can expense your hotel, you can expense your food, you can expense your travel to keep your receipts and or put everything on a credit card so it's easy to consolidate all your purchases. You can purchase passes to individual summits. For example, there's an Indie Summit and that gets you into all the talks that are relevant to that subject. I think the Indie Summit pass was 500 bucks, which is not too bad. There's some really cool talks there. If you wanna spend less money, you can do what I did and get the Expo Pass. This gets you into the Expo floor Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And if you're early like me, you can get the Early Bird discount. I think that gets you 50 bucks off. So I think this was 250 bucks which can be well worth it. And then probably the cheapest way to buy a badge is to buy the Friday only badge, which is just 99 bucks. Obviously check the website for all these prices. I will caution you on the Friday only badge though, because the expo floor is only open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Friday, whereas every other day it's 10 to six. And as you can imagine, people are starting to get pretty tired by Friday and stuff starts to kind of wrap up early. So I don't know about the Friday only badge, but it's definitely a way to keep your expenses down. Now for lodging at GDC, you're gonna need somewhere to sleep if you wanna travel and stay in town. The hotels near the Moscone Center are very expensive. I mean, they're nice, but in my opinion, it's worth staying a bit away from Moscone Center. My advice there would just be to find a hotel that's near a BART station. There's a BART station that's about a 10 minute walk from the Moscone Center. So if you stay at a hotel near any BART station, you can take a quick BART to the Montgomery Station, get off and just walk 10 minutes and you're there. Pretty good. No matter what hotel you get, just make sure it's in a safe neighborhood. Make sure it has all the amenities you need. Like San Francisco has a lot of hostels. So if you don't want like a shared bathroom and you wanna make sure you've got like your own private lockable room, just check the website and make sure you know what you're purchasing. One low budget option is to bunk with friends. You can either get a room together and share the expense or you can stay with a friend if you've got one in town. One time I stayed with my buddy, Brett Elston, who some of you might know from the Laser Time Podcast Network especially VG Empire. Brett's currently with Sony, but back in the day, he was a community manager at Capcom. Oh, wait, no, the bus, the bus doesn't quite do it. Cap Capcom with a, with a sign for the, oh, yeah. 
I've also stayed with my friend Greg Love, who I recently did a podcast with. We talked about his game Seeing Things and Steam Next Fest. Check that out if that sounds interesting to you. Now let's talk about the Moscone Center itself. This is where GDC takes place. The first time you go there, I think it's a little intimidating and kind of confusing. There's a busy road that splits right down the center of the Moscone Center. There's the North Hall and the South Hall. The South Hall is usually where you pick up your badge. And once you've got your badge, it doesn't really matter which hall you go into because they're connected underneath. The North Hall and the South Hall is where the expo floor takes place. So that's the area where you can roam and just visit booths and see what's going on. There's also a West Hall. That's where most of the talks are. But the whole compound is huge. Multiple halls, multiple wings, multiple floors. I think it's worth exploring and checking it out. There's a store where you can get lots of cool merch. They've got physical games for sale. And of course, they even have books. My book, How to Make a Video Game All by Yourself, was not there this year. But if you go to GDC in 2025 and beyond, I hope you will see this book. It's my goal to get it in there. So if you don't see it, I messed something up. But check out the store, pick up something cool if that's what you wanna do. It's worth mentioning Yerba Buena Gardens. It's not part of Moscone Center, but I feel like it's kind of part of GDC. It's just a free public park that's super close. It's got lots of space, it's got water features, trees and grass. I saw a hummingbird. It's a really cool space and inevitably that whole week, game developers are gonna gather at Yerba Buena Gardens. And I talked to lots of devs who didn't even bother getting a pass. They just showed up for the week of GDC. They hung out at Yerba Buena Gardens. They went to restaurants with friends. They went to GDC after parties, which we'll talk about later. A few of the people I met at Yerba Buena lived in Oakland and they would just commute in every day hang out with devs and then go home at night. Pretty sweet. At Yerba Buena Gardens, there were really cool meetups like the web dev meetup, which had lots of devs who were like me who like to use web tech to make games, you know, like in JavaScript, TypeScript, Canvas 2D, WebGL, HTML5, all these cool things that weren't necessarily made to make games, but you can totally make games in them. So there was a web dev meetup and I met lots of cool people and made some new friends. And that stuff's all free. You can just go to that, no GDC pass necessary. If you've been following me for a while, you're probably familiar with Chris Zukowski, who runs howtomarketagame.com. And Yerba Buena is where he had two meetups. I went to the one on Thursday. It was very entertaining to see Chris get absolutely swarmed by all his fans who wanted to talk to him about how to market their games. So I just got in there real quick, got a handshake with Chris, took my little selfie and then got out of his face. When you're wandering around Moscone Center and Yerba Buena, I think it's good to like look at people, see if you recognize anybody. You might be surprised. Even if you don't recognize any faces, look at the badges. You might recognize somebody's name. I saw a familiar looking dude walking by, glanced down at the badge, and sure enough, it was Daniel Baranowski. Super cool guy and a prolific game composer. He's done the soundtracks for games like Super Meat Boy, The Binding of Isaac, Crypt of the Necrodancer, and Industries of Titan. I used to know Danny B back in the day via the Overclocked Remix forums when we were both really into video game music remixes. He did this amazing Earthworm Jim remix you've gotta check out. It was fun to talk to Danny about music and he plays live shows. He was actually playing a show the very next night at DNA Lounge with really cool bands like Arm Cannon. But unfortunately I was flying out before that so I missed out. But we talked about other live shows like Video Games Live, which was run by Tommy Tallarico. And that got us talking about YouTube, including like the Roblox Oof video, have you seen this? It's by a YouTuber named H Bomber Guy. And at first it's just kind of exploring the history of the Roblox Oof sound, which is this sound that plays when your character in any Roblox game gets hit, they go like, oof. Ooh. People tell me it's from Roblox, but I swear I've heard it somewhere else. It was just exploring the history of that, but then it got really deep into Tommy Tallarico. I don't need to say his name. He named his studio after himself. Are you, are you ready? Yeah. So we went down that rabbit hole and we started talking about H Bomber Guy's other videos, like his amazing four hour plagiarism video. Anyway, it was cool talking to Danny and then I went back to Moscone Center and sure enough, when looking around to see who was there, I saw none other than H Bomber Guy. It kind of blew my mind, honestly, because I had just recently binged like every video he ever did. So I'd been staring at his face a lot. And so to see him in person, I just kind of turned into a fanboy. It's a little embarrassing, honestly. Of course, I had to get a selfie before letting H-Bomb go on his merry way. So I think it's worth exploring. It's worth looking around. It's worth seeing who's there. It's worth walking the entire expo floor. 
It's worth wandering Yerba Buena Gardens. It's worth being familiar with who's who in the games industry space and just chatting people up. Try to make new friends. Moscone Center is huge and honestly, I think it's kind of worth walking every inch that you're allowed to. Next, let's talk about GDC parties, which are really important to attend in my opinion. First, go to GDCparties.com and I hope the website's still up by the time you watch this. It links you to a Google spreadsheet, which is massive and has all the data you'd want about the GDC parties going on. You can make a copy of the spreadsheet for your own purposes where you can just copy and paste the ones that you're interested in into your own sheet. You can also add them directly to your Google Calendar. Some of these parties require an RSVP, so I think it's worth checking the site. There's a couple I actually couldn't go to because I forgot to RSVP. And there was one where like I was waiting in line to get in and people had not RSVP'd, but they could do that like in the line. So definitely check the party site to see what the deal is before you go. The GDC parties are an important part of GDC. You might be there all day in the expo floor, walking around booths or going to talks, but the evening is a really good opportunity to make friends. Thousands and thousands of people go to these GDC parties and they're very receptive to just having a chat. I think it's important when you go to these parties to be bold. Like I'm kind of naturally a little shy. I'm the kind of person who uh, at a party where I don't know anybody or at like a busy bar, I'm likely to kind of go in the corner and sulk by myself, but not at GDC. Walk around, you know, anyone who looks friendly, anyone who makes eye contact with me, I will just walk up and introduce myself. And I think that's the way to do it. Walk around, say hi, offer people your business card, ask if they have a business card, or otherwise just ask if you can connect. I think it's smart to be like, hey, what social networking sites do you use? Are you on Twitter or Facebook? Instagram, maybe YouTube. A lot of people I talked to didn't have business cards, but they wanted to connect on LinkedIn. And apparently there's this thing where you can uh, scan a QR code that LinkedIn generates. And I must have connected to a dozen people just using that method. And of course I exchanged a lot of cards. Keep in mind at these GDC parties that you do not have to drink. You don't have to drink. If you feel weird about it, just get like a glass of water, just something to hold in your hand to feel more comfortable. Get like a Coke. Some people will probably assume it's alcohol and they won't say anything at all. So just be yourself, make yourself comfortable. Don't feel pressured to do anything you don't wanna do. And any party you don't like, just feel free to bail. That's one reason I think it's a good idea to just sign up for as many parties as you can, maybe like three to five per night. You don't have to go to all those parties, but it's good to have them on your calendar. So if you go to one and it doesn't really click with you, you can just bail and go to another one. There was this one I went to and it was awesome. And I decided to leave and check out another one. And then that second one I went to was kind of like a club, you know, loud music, lots of dancing, definitely not a good place to have a chat. And so I did like one loop around, decided it wasn't for me and just got out of there. But definitely go to some parties and just see what the deal is. People are generally really friendly and you can often get free food and free drinks. Also, it's good to be aware of this. There are secret parties you can get invited to. There's this one that I've gone to now three or four times. It's an amazing party. They send out these super cool invites. It's got everybody's name in this really fancy cursive. And it's always like at a secret location they don't tell you about right away. So my week had to be a little responsive in that regard. I signed up for way too many parties. And then once I found out the location of the secret party, I just canceled everything else. Like that was my goal. It was super cool. It had all these unique cocktails. So many awesome people were there. They had this ridiculous camera set up where you could get your body 3D scanned. And they had people looking like they were a giant kaiju attacking the Golden Gate Bridge. For me, I kind of wanted to work with the model they generated. So they had me stand in like the A-frame pose, you know, so I could rig my model later if I wanted to. Super cool, honestly. I can't believe how many amazing conversations I had there. Met so many cool people. And I know there's got to be a bunch more parties like that that I just don't know about. The way you can get invited is just make friends, be cool, be positive, and then just ask what's going on. You know, like, hey, what's what are you doing tomorrow night? Any cool parties I should know about? And a lot of times they're just public parties that are on gdcparties.com. But then once in a while, you might hear about a secret party and that might be your in. So just be aware of that and just poke around and see what you can find out. Lastly, let's talk about some general advice when attending GDC. First off, wear comfy shoes. You're gonna be walking a lot. Every single day I was there, I hit my like steps for the day. You know, you might use Fitbit. I use Google Fit to kind of track your steps throughout the day. I would always hit my steps goal by like noon. When wandering around San Francisco, don't travel alone at night. San Francisco is not really a dangerous place, but it can be if you go the wrong places, especially at night. For example, you kind of want to avoid the tenderloin even during the day. And this stuff might change over time, so just kind of do a little research, maybe ask around if you know anyone who lives there, and they can give you some advice on what areas to avoid. I've heard some people say you should keep your schedule kind of loose so you can be reactive and go to some talks that might pop up or some parties that might pop up. I've heard other people give the advice that you should pack your schedule as much as possible so that you're busy the 
whole time. So you should kind of figure out what's right for you. In my opinion, you should pack your schedule. Sometimes people drop off and you definitely don't want to have any time where you're kind of just wandering around not knowing what to do. If there's booths you want to check out in the expo floor, you should definitely do that. One piece of advice is do not pay for booze at GDC. I think one time I got like a beer at lunch with a friend, but every single day at 5 p.m. on the expo floor, it was happy hour. I was telling a friend I was going to meet them at 5 p.m. on the expo floor for the, for the happy hour. I thought it was like a designated location or something, but no, it's just the whole expo floor. At 5 p.m., a lot of booths just start serving beer or wine or whatever. If you don't know where else to go to find that kind of stuff, just go to the big biggest booths. At the Epic booth, you know, they run Fortnite and Unreal Engine. They just had the beer flowing. You can just walk up at any time, grab a free beer. It's great. Again, you don't need to drink, so just don't do it if you don't want to. Don't feel any pressure to drink either. If someone's pressuring you to drink, that's maybe a red flag that you don't want to be friends with that person anyway. So just do whatever you feel comfortable with. I would say make sure to pace yourself. Like I limit myself to just two drinks per night. Just keep in mind that usually you've got a big day the next day, and so you don't want to be too hungover or feel terrible. So have fun, be yourself, don't feel pressured, drink if you want or don't. But in my opinion, there's really no reason to buy alcohol the whole week. When GDC wraps up, you might be wondering what to do with your GDC pass. There's an area near the exit where you can recycle them. You can just drop them off and they'll take care of it. But if you're kind of a pack rat like me, you might want to take it home. But then like, what are you going to do with it? Just like put it in a box or something? Maybe I'm a weirdo, but one thing I like to do is hang them in my closet and use them to separate my shirts. You know, you might have like dark shirts and light shirts and colored shirts and workout shirts. And sometimes I use my conference passes to separate those out. Like in one, I've got one of my old E3 passes, which I'll probably never get rid of because E3 doesn't exist exist anymore. So there we go. I think that's all my advice for now. If you're going to GDC, just be safe, be curious, be kind, make friends, and I think you're going to have a great GDC. What a week. I'm tired.